Somebody's got to grind the coffee. Somebody's got to make the donut, and somebody's got to grind the coffee. That's the way the world works. Come on, baby brew. Give us the nectar of the gods. Brew. Brew. Well, I think it's brewing. Black gold, Texas tea. Well, I'm finally gonna shave today. I wanted to give this, uh, well, I don't even really see it. Oh, it's right there. I wanted to give that guy a little bit of a chance to heal before I went and shaved, but I'm working tonight and I have to shave. What is the cool thing about me working tonight? I'm only a block away from my apartment. How odd is that? When they sent me the address, I was like, I literally live a block away from there. It's a two minute walk, so it's gonna be awesome, but I gotta shave, so time to do the duty. Be nice, Mr. Razor. Just be nice this time. Well, how's it look? Smooth as a newborn baby. I think a ferry exploded out here. Well, I noticed when we were leaving Kevin's house last night that my uh, one of my headlights is out, so number one priority today, right now, is to go get a new headlight and replace my headlights. Here we go. All right, let's do this. All right, that's proof even an idiot like me can do some things on their own. Today's shirt. Jaws here, Jaws here, Jaws here, he's pulling up. Well, he's back, but he's watching Pollyanna because Pollyanna's getting ready to leave. Aren't ya? You watching Pollyanna leave? There she goes. You wanna go inside and hang out? You wanna go inside? Come on in, bud. Well, John, I just hung out and watched the Ohio State game today and just chilled out. He played so much last night, he was wiped out. He just kept walking around, squinting his eyes, and he wasn't having any kind of activity today, so we just chilled out. Now, I'm heading to work. Gotta work till about 1 a.m., so that's pretty much all you're gonna get today. Tomorrow, you don't wanna miss it. Tomorrow, Breck has a day off, and he wanted to be involved in one of my more fun expeditions. One I kinda been saving, and one I know that he's gonna love. Come back tomorrow, we're going to Spawn Ranch. We're gonna go to the sites of the Manson family. And that is gonna be one day. <laughs> wow. There's gonna be some serious info. It's gonna be a long one, but we're gonna see all the scenes, like all the, uh, where all the prominent shots from the Life Magazine were. Or was it Time Magazine? I forget which one it was. I have research to do tonight, and, uh, yeah, it's uh, the original dirt road's gone. <clears throat> the whole like movie uh, movie setup's gone, but there's still a lot of remnants out there and a whole lot of history. I'm at work. We're gonna have to call it a night. Yeah, look at the inside of here. It's called the Lombardi House, and this used to be a silent movie star's home. I don't know who the Lombardis are, so I guess I have some research to do after this event. Just got out of work. Crazy. We were finishing up for the night. The guy went to walk to pick up our rental van from around the corner, and the van had gotten towed. So all the rental equipment is stuck at that house. Speaking of that house, the Lombardi house, I looked up and found out a little bit of information on it. That place is the oldest, well, 1904. It's the oldest mansion on Hollywood Boulevard left in existence. There's only two left from the original days. That's one of them. It's called Lombardi House because um, the primary residents moved into it in the 40s were vocal coaches named Lombardi's. And I read that, uh, the man who now owns it, when he bought it, some of the furnishings that came with the house were a piano, 
and a bunch of signed pictures by John Travolta because he was one of the prized students of the Lombardis. Interesting, so that's what that house was that I worked at. Gonna go home now and see Ja. Well, it's the end of the night, and I just wanted to wish my best friend Seth a happy birthday. Happy 39th birthday. His birthday was today, and uh, man, you know, he's my oldest friend. Um, you know, there's definitely friends that I've met before him, but they never really, uh, they haven't stuck around, you know, like people that you meet while you're in like elementary school and you go to junior high, you lose friends. When you go to junior high to high school, you lose friends and you go to high school. And me, I'm the kind of person that I always, you know, every couple of years I'm, I get into something else pretty hardcore and, um, I just move on, like not, not move on from friends, but I move on to new interests and with new interests comes new, you close doors and open new doors. And when I uh, first started playing music and got into my very first band, Seth was around for that. Seth was the singer of that band for a short time. Then he became the artist for that band and has just been my best friend since then. And I wanted to wish that guy a happy birthday. Without him, I would not have the appreciation for Vincent Price. Um, Danzig, uh, I wouldn't have the appreciation for the Misfits. I don't know that I would even have the same appreciation that I have for Weezer if it weren't for Seth. So happy birthday, Seth. Um, th next, I wanted to thank my Patreon person. You know who you are. Um, today we celebrate the 60th vlog. 60 days. 60 days. Every single day for 60 days, I've put together a mini movie for whoever would watch about the things that interest me. And I started this channel the day I started my very first vlog. There was no subscribers before that. There was no content before that. There was no nothing before that. 60 days in and we have 63 followers. I mean, 63 subscribers. That's a big deal to me. I mean, I know other people it takes so long to get a following and not to say that 63 is a huge following, but it's, progress it's showing that something that we're working on together this community that we're starting and appreciation for history and for um a world that we're losing right before our very eyes that there are other people outside of me that have a, a respect and appreciation for that and you know when i started this vlog the second day into this vlog a very good friend of mine who had been trying to encourage me into doing a podcast said look man I'm going to be honest with you. Would I listen to you do a podcast once a week for an hour and a half, two hours, just talking? Yes, I would, because that's your gift. Your gift is you can tell a story. He goes, am I going to watch a 12-minute video of you every day? Sorry, Jordan, I'm not. I'm not going to do it, because that's not what your gift is. That's not what I want out of you. And he goes, you come talk to me in two weeks from now of doing these vlogs, and let's see how you feel. Let's see if you're still as excited about it. I am. I love doing the vlogs. I love it. I love making these little mini movies. I love having the creative input. When I started doing this, here's kind of what inspired me. I've always had a thirst for knowledge. I've had a thirst for just finding out various things. And today, you know what your vlog was supposed to be? Your vlog today, for me, was going to be, we were going to go to the Falcon's Lair. The home of Rudy Valentino, Rudolph Valentino, who died at the age of 26. Couldn't do that. Do you know why we couldn't do that? Because it doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't exist. When I looked it up, they bulldozed his house to make room for the 101 freeway. That's what's happening to our history. They're not going to bulldoze a president's house, a birth house, or, or a house that they live in. They're not going to do that, but they will bulldoze... Uh, you know, an expendable actor or just somebody who's forgotten about. That's why it's so important for me, for people like me, to spread the history, spread the great words, to spread the excitement about these things. My very first vlog was something that I've been trying to do for over 10 years and just for whatever reason, I just something always came up where I didn't end up going. I didn't ever went to Clark Gable's house. It's there. God, would I love to own that house? Yes, I would. Would I love to live there? Yes, I would. Is it a goal? Yes, it is. Is it attainable? Who knows? But it's possible. 
it is possible because we are entering a day and age now in the world that I don't think anybody ever foresaw coming. When I was in my band and we signed our first record deal, the owner of the company came to me and he said, look, Jordan, Apple Music flew us out. They did a big presentation. The future is in digital music. It's in MP3s. It's not in CDs. It's not in records. It's not in physical product. And I argued and I said, no, you're wrong, man. People will always want to hold the art in their hands. They'll want to look at the art. When you were in high school, you spent your allowance, you spent your money on music. Kids don't do that anymore. They, they spend it on games. What I'm trying to say is that the world is ever evolving. And one of the things that will always evolve in the world is people with creativity will find a way to reach their audience. They will find a way to reach the masses. And with YouTube, now we have an opportunity to create content, to create our own media, to create our own television. I'm going to tell you right now, reality TV is not real. I've worked on it. I've had to sign non-disclosure agreements saying that I won't say what we did. A lot of it's staged, a lot of it's scripted, a lot of it's seven or eight takes of getting reactions so that it'll look real. YouTube is the closest thing to reality that we have. And you're in a position, if you like what we do, if you like what the people that run channels that you go to every day, like I go to Adam the Woo every day, I go to Casey Nice every day, you're in a position, if you like what we do, you can make us everyday viewing television. And that's why I do a daily vlog, because I feel if you get into what I do, it'll be like Johnny Carson. You'll come back every day. I'm getting to the point now where people want longer vlogs from me. 12 minutes isn't enough. 20 minutes sometimes just doesn't feel like 20 minutes, and that's awesome. We're in a position now of just creating something big. I can keep doing this as long as people will watch. And I'm going to keep doing this as long as people will watch. When I, as I make money, as, not just in this, but just as in life in general, it's going to open me the opportunities to go travel, to do, go to places that I haven't done before, vlog places I haven't got a vlog before, get a better camera, get just do a lot of things that aren't possible right now. But on day one, I didn't think that anything would be possible. I thought I would do a few of these, I'd get maybe five or six people to watch them, and then it would just die out and nobody would care. And what's turned out to happen is, if I can get somebody to watch them, they will come back. They come back and they love it, and I didn't expect that. It's just hard to get people to go to it. But I know this, I know that if my 88... 89 year old grandfather will watch my vlogs every day on YouTube and that if my parents who kind of represent middle America you know they have nine to five jobs they come home they've worked hard they eat dinner together and they watch TV it's hard to break people of watching cable but they're watching my vlogs they're marathoning my vlogs they wouldn't be doing it if they didn't like the content believe me I just don't think that that's that would happen but they're falling into the same thing I fell into, which is I realized you can support independent thought. You can support independent artistry, and this is just the best way to do it. So I just want to say thank you. 60 days in, I want to th thank everybody, tell you I appreciate everybody that watches every single vlog. I appreciate every comment. and. I don't ignore the, uh, I try and respond to almost every comment on YouTube. If somebody asks me a question, I try and respond. I am going to hit all the places that you've requested. Believe me, there's so many places that it's just going to take time. I mean, you guys saw, we go to cemeteries and I can't even hit a tenth of the cemetery. So this is just something that it's what I like to do, what I like to explore in my life, and I'm just trying to bring it to the people that don't know it exists. You know, when when I wanted to know about the Knickerbocker Hotel because I walk by it almost every day and have for 16, almost 17 years, I never knew any of the history. And then when I went on YouTube, there was one video. There's one mysteries and scandals about it. You go on and you, you look through books and you can read and you can find a nugget here and you can find a nugget there and a nugget here and a nugget there. 
there's just not enough information about it for people to want to know, for, for somebody to want to go out and support it from being bulldozed if that ever happens. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find out interesting facts about these places so that when people go and see them, they'll know there was a history. They'll know what was going on. You can, I mean, there's no better way to learn than from history. I mean, I think that's why I love documentaries and autobiographies and biographies so much more than the things that happen in life today because you can sit back and you can watch the mistakes that people have made. You can look at the decisions people have made and you can look at the hard, hard decisions people make that affect their life that sometimes you're afraid to make. And sometimes it gives you the, uh, the extra push that you need to do it. For me, you know, I'm, I'm terrified of not having somewhere to live you know, of, of, of having to rely on somebody. Um, you know, every time I watch a documentary, one of those things that constantly comes up in a documentary is that the person always had this line. They had this moment in their life where they had to make a decision. If they were in a band, they either had to quit their job and go do something and just risk not having a job. If they were, you know, an actor, they had to leave this to do this and the... It, that's always been a fear. You know, there's a certain amount of satisfaction knowing that you have something to fall back on, but it's not, for me, it's just not a way to live life. Um, I just can't see being, being somebody's employee for the rest of my life. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not what I was meant to do, and that's not what I bring to the world. What I bring to the world is just me, my personality, my crazy thoughts on things, my crazy interest in things, and my way of getting people into it. I at one point had eight apartments in my building, and I managed to get over half the people that live there into Francis X. Bushman. People that didn't know anything about him, but it was I was so enthusiastic, and I knew so much that I could tell them stories, I could show them stuff in my house, I could show them movies, I could show them clips, I could show them things, that they got it. It started to sink in. They started to see how awesome some of this stuff is. So that's what I do. Thanks everybody for watching for 60 days. And um, we're going to keep going. Uh, hopefully I hope to bring um, just better quality, better editing, better videos, better places. And uh, thank you so much to all my friends that started watching this when nobody else would. And now thank you to all the people that are watching this that I've never met. You guys are just as important and I appreciate every single one of you. Vlog over.